Hey everyone, it's Kat from Cross Stitch Chaos. Um, wanted to get in a video. It's been a little bit over a month since I did my last one, so time to get one in while I have the chance. Um, this is going to be a fairly short one today because I have to be somewhere in a little over an hour and it's a 30 minute drive, so I've got to keep this short and sweet. But the good news is I don't have a whole lot to show because I am still on a chart buying ban. I'm not doing very good at it. But I am on a chart buying ban still, and I'm not going to talk about much life stuff other than the season starts back at Kings Island on April 19th. Um, not this coming weekend, but the weekend after is our training day, April 14th. Um, so we'll start getting back into the swing of things, and then Coney will start up, and then life is going to explode. So I'm going to try to get in one more video before um, work starts getting crazy in mid-May, um, because then it might be August before I get another video in. And as usual, here's Candy. She hears me recording a video. Time to come play. So, uh, I'm gonna open my drink now while I'm thinking about it, because I'm gonna want it, and Candy will try to knock it off. And of course the kittens have found something to play with that makes noise. By the way, here's my rabbit trail for the time. Orange vanilla. This stuff is so good. Like, I knew I liked orange coke, and I knew I liked vanilla coke, so I suspected I would like this, but it's really good. I'm on my second 12 pack of it. Hey, Loki, can you not? I don't know what he has found, but oh, I'm going to uh, take it away from them. Sorry, kids. Okay, so first up, I'm going to start with finishes because believe it or not, I have three of them. Three finishes. Who am I? Anyway, so first one is one that you guys saw as a whip that was getting close to finished and wow I apparently didn't um surge this edge here comes candy again um so this one has actually been ironed and is now ready to finish I don't know how I'm gonna finish yet I think I'm just gonna frame it but I don't know so here is my field of fucks this is two over two on 40 count using all weeks die works conversion from the DMC so here is what it looked like in my last video And now it is finished. The only DMC that I used, I actually did use some, that gold on that border. I went ahead and used DMC on that, but that's, that's it. All the rest of this is Weeks Dye Works. I don't remember which colors, but I had to restart this project. And let me tell you, ripping out on um, 20 count or on 40 count fabric is a bitch. I don't ever want to have to do this again. Um, this fabric, by the way, I love this. It's a beautiful neutral and it's opalescent and I want to find more of it. It's called Tiramisu. And I believe it is an under the sea, but I think it was one of her monthlies and I really want to find more of it. So I got that at StitchCon last year. Candy. Delete. All right. Next finish is another one that you guys saw. This I had just barely started it in my last video. And that is Halloweenies by Plum Stew Samplers. And everybody that saw me working on this was shocked to see me working on it at Keepsakes because it is not at all something I would normally do. But it's super cute, and I may actually do a couple more of these because they're really... This only took me, I think, a week. And it's really cute. I love the... I used Classic Colorworks um, for most of the threads, and I loved how the Classic Colorworks stitched up. Um, this is for my sister-in-law. Um, how many times am I going to delete the candy? Um, this is for my sister-in-law. It's going to be a Christmas present. Um, I made her husband a tractor last year which I showed in my last video so um, they have three dachshunds so she loves everything we dogs and she loves Halloween so here is Halloweenies and here is what it looked like before and then obviously finished this is on 36 count vintage country mocha first time ever stitching on it it stitched very nicely um, it's a, it's a fairly, it's a kind of stiff linen, and what I was surprised by is, look, it's printed. The back is, okay, you guys want to see something disgusting. Here's the front. Here's the back. By the way, in my camera, it shows everything as a mirror image, so the writing looks right, and I thought I was showing you the front, and I went to turn it around, I'm like, oh, nope, that's the back. Because, yeah, I mean, my disgustingly neat backs. Um... I've talked before about how I'm trying to break that for my heaven and earths because it takes too long to keep them neat, but that's my back. I'm proud of it. Yep. It's ridiculous. So anyway, my point was 
The back, no modeling. The front, modeling. I just, I don't know, I wasn't expecting that. I always hear people talk about stitching on vintage country mocha and I did not know it was a printed fabric, so there it is. Oh, and Hunter is, hey, down. He's playing with the strings on the, uh, the blinds. It is a beautiful sunny day. I want to say it's in the 50s today. I'm not sure. I wonder if Google can pick me up from here. Hey Google, what te what's the temperature? It's 60. <laughs> it's finally spring. I say that because last week it was like in the teens. It was awful. Okay, so there's two of my finishes. Last one. I had not started this. I had mentioned I was going to and then Damn that magical stitches. Um, this is what came up on, they had us make a list. I wasn't 100% clear on the instructions because I had seen conflicting reports of, do you include starts that you are ready to start or not? So I included three that I was planning to start within the next month. Just so happened that number 13 was one of the new starts. I only had 12 whips. I am now at 13 because I started and finished this one and started another one. So I am at 13 whips. I am trying to reduce that down to 10 by the end of the year. We'll see. But this is, have a nice poop. Is that not the cutest poop ever? He's so cute and yet it's not ironed. Ignore how wrinkly it is. So I'm like super, super crunchy 18 count Ada from Walmart. It's gonna hang in my bathroom. I don't care what kind of fabric it's on. Get down. Hunter's being a demon. But it's like the cutest poop emoji ever. My husband was like over the moon when I showed it to him. He was like, oh, you made me a poop. Because my husband, I don't understand it. He's obsessed with the poop emoji and I just roll with it. Okay, so there's my finishes. Um, the next, I don't, you guys know I don't do anything in any semblance of order. So time check, 6.04. By the way, since people like to know what date and time it is, it is 6.04 p.m. here in Ohio. It is um, Thursday, April 3rd. No, not Thursday, Wednesday, wow. I don't usually go anywhere on Wednesdays. So this is, oh, me and my roommate are getting massages tonight. Oh yeah. It's her first time ever getting a full massage. I'm really excited for her. So anyway, um, in my last video, I mentioned that she had gotten me the DVD of Just Cross Stitch Halloween. It is 2011 through 2014. I found my DVD. <laughs> it was in a drawer. It wasn't hard to find. I don't know why I couldn't find it last time, but there it is. So this is what the um, Edgar Allan Poe sampler I showed last time came out of um, that I had, posed, I had talked about wanting and she watched my last two video and gave away all the secrets projects that I was working on for her and my part is like oh my god crooked oh well the things you notice so anyway so there's the DVD I also forgot to show two things that I got at um stitch away that I did they weren't in my bag they were in Deborah's bag so they got put in the drawer and I forgot to show them so the first one is this is a Sue Hillis it is called what a hoot and it's all little owl designs and I got it for this one down here that says grow old with me the best is yet to be because my husband loves sappy things and I don't know it's so cute and it's his favorite colors and so I'm gonna make that for him eventually I make him a lot of cute little sappy stuff so I'm gonna do this without showing it but on the back there we go there's a little thing about Vanna hi Vanna oops there we go and here's Hunter so you guys remember how I had these little four month old kittens last time. Here's this big boy, he's six months old now. He's so big. And they're gonna go get fixed in two weeks. He doesn't know that yet, he he he. But I'm tired of having little boys who wanna pee in my house. So they're getting fixed. So they were peeing in my house. Little boy cat pees the worst. Anyway, so my other thing that I got is also a Sue Hillis. It's called America the Beautiful. And I don't know why, this is, again, not something I would normally stitch, but I think it's really neat. It's a map of the US. And then there's like, and you can also, like you can pull out each state. So there's Ohio. Well, this is, so the actual like Ohio is like that. And then you can get just the states and they have like more detail to them, so like, there's Ohio with all of its little like farm stuff and tractors and 
it has like the cities marked and it actually has Dayton. The main one has like all the capitals. Um, random tidbit about me. I have known my state capitals since I was in first grade. That used to be my party trick is that I could, I had memorized all the state capitals just because I could. And people would be like, what's the capital of Connecticut? <laughs> and like, I could answer it. And I've sadly forgotten half of them, but I can tell you Connecticut's Hartford. Um, but like, that was my party trick when I was in elementary school before we ever learned them in school. They'd be like, what's the capital of Vermont? And I'd be like, Montpelier! <laughs> like, seven-year-old me. It was great. Um, so the other thing, um, other things I have to show you, these are ones that I actually ordered last year. They just took a while to come in. Um, and so I got them last month at Keepsakes. Uh, they are also Sue Hillis. Are we seeing a trend here? Sue Hillis is from Cincinnati. I buy a lot of her designs. Um, these are ones that I'm going to stitch for my husband because he loves pirates. The beatings will continue until morale improves. He has always loved that saying, so I got him that. It comes with pirate flag charm to go on the uh, to go on the flag or on the yeah on the flag down here. And then the other one, I'm making this one so that he can have it at work because he is a teacher. Piracy, a viable career option. <laughs> I know his students will love that. He teaches high school, so. Um, he teaches at an alternative school. Um, anybody who's in virtual stitchers has heard me talk about this. All of his students have either autism, ADHD, oppositional defiance disorder, um, some variety of behavioral disorder. So like the ones that mainstream schools don't really know what to do with or they put in special ed classes, his school is specifically designed for those students and, and it, the environment really helps them thrive. And the flip side of that is you don't know what these kids are going to do or say on any given day. And my favorite story ever is when I asked him to tell one of our friends, stop touching your face. Um, I asked him to tell one of, uh, one of our friends the story about the student who jumped out the window in the middle of class. And he goes, oh, which one? Because apparently students jumping out the window of his classroom is just a thing now. Um, okay, last few things that I got. Um, I managed to lose my glow-in-the-dark threads that I had bought that I showed you several videos ago for um, the Haunted Mansion, um, Tiny Modernist Haunted Mansion. I loaned them to my sister-in-law. She gave them back to me. I don't know where I put them. Um, so I reordered them because you can never have too much. I can use them for other projects if I find them. But can't order just threads. So I broke my, I broke my no chart, no new charts. Um, I did order, this is an ink circles that I found. Um, I came across one of its sister charts and I went, oh, I wonder if they have, and they did. It is an alto clef. It is called All Together Now. Um, for those who are not musically inclined, the alto clef is the clef that the viola plays in and only the viola plays in. So it's kind of the unofficial symbol of the viola, which is what I play and have played for 23 years. Um, that's what I play in the Miami Valley Symphony. Um, so I do not like these colors at all. I'm changing the colors. That's going to be purple because the color of the viola is purple. There's actually an entire poem about why the color of the viola is purple because it is the color of royalty. Um, so I'm, I'm changing the colors. It's going to be in dark purple and, and it's all going to be in purples. But um, I found this and I had to have it and I was like, ooh, excuse. So the other things I got, they were having a sale on Mill Hill kits. I got four Mill Hills. Uh, the first one was, this one's being discontinued, I think. So I had to get it, Rubber Ducky. I collect rubber ducks. Um, for those that don't remember from my very, very first video, I did a walkthrough of my house with all of our Christmas trees. I actually have a six foot tall Christmas tree every year that is nothing but rubber ducks. I have probably about 200 rubber ducks at this point in my life. So anything rubber duck, I have to have it. Um, I made the front page of Reddit for my rubber duck tree last year. That was kind of cool. Um, then, Candace, she's come back. Um, this is called Christmas Lights. It's a just a tangle of Christmas lights. My husband is like a Christmas light guru. Like if you give him a strand of Christmas lights that's a giant knot and doesn't work, he will have them working in 20 minutes. I don't understand it. It's like his, I always say everybody has a superpower my superpower is that I can find an outlet anywhere. Like literally, I was standing in the middle of Main Street and Disney charging my phone because I can find an outlet anywhere. My husband's is Christmas lights. 
My roommates, by the way, is Ikea furniture. Everyone has a superpower and it's always something weird. I knew somebody once that could measure, like visually measure, she had incredibly good spatial awareness. She could look at something, look at where you were trying to put it and say whether it would fit within an inch. It was crazy. Everybody has a superpower. Figure out what yours is. Okay, so third one, it is called Love Stitching. It's a little ornament. Um, I'm gonna make this for the Smalls Exchange for StitchCon. I didn't do the Smalls Exchange last year and I wanted to do it this year, so that's what I'm gonna do for it. And the last one is, I saw this in um, the back of a magazine and I went, oh hi, it's the cutest thing ever and I had to have it, it's a slice of pizza. Why is the pizza so cute? Why? Why is the pizza so cute? I don't understand, but look at it. It's a beaded slice of pizza. I delivered pizza for five years. I needed the piece of pizza. So. That's all my stuff I bought. Look okay, at my chart volume data. It's going so well, isn't it? Hmm. Okay. However, outside of charts that I bought, I ordered the thread for Death by Cross Stitch. There is a group of us, time check, 613. Um, there's a group of us that are doing um, Death by Cross Stitch as a stitch along. Um, this is my copy of the pattern. So this is not the original. It's the original is like nice, hard, not quite cardstock, but it's nice thick paper. This is just my working copy, but um, this is Death by Cross Stitch. You guys have all seen it. It's charted a solid black. I am, I ordered some, I, at Stitch Away, some of the people who are doing the sow with me uh, were talking about where they got their threads and several people recommended Silks For You because I didn't want to spend like $80 on thread. I was originally going to do it as Bradley's Balloons by Threadworks. But even stitching it one over one on a high count fabric, it was going to be $80 for the threads. And so I just couldn't justify that because this is just a piece that I'm doing just because like it's not something I'm super in love with. It's just there. Um, doing it for the sake of it, I guess. I don't know. Um, so I think it was Polly, Old Dominion Stitcher, that had some silks for you. Um, Hanks. And I looked up the length on them, which is, I think, 30, 30 meters, I want to say. Um, and it was enough that if I did it one over one on at least 25 count, then one Hank would do it. And a Hank is only $30 for silk. 30, I'm pretty sure it's 30 meters. It's either 30 meters or 30 yards of silk. So I went through and I looked and I fell in love with one of the colors. And so I ordered it, it came from Australia. Um, it took about two weeks, which is like really fast from Australia. She mailed it the next day. Stop trying to knock my camera off. Um, she met it like the next day, so it came within two weeks. Um, this color does not have a name, it's just called purple. Um, it's purple and then a number, because she's got several purple dyes. But, look at that! Isn't that gorgeous? I love this color! And I asked her specifically if she could send me a hank that had less of the bright pink in it, because the, the mock-up had some spots that were like bright pink. And I was like, you know, I'm not expecting a custom dye or anything just do you have any hanks that have a little bit less of the pink and more of the purple and blue and this is what she sent me and man she nailed my request absolutely nailed it like look at how beautiful this is it's got teal in it right here all these blue this royal blue in it all the purple and the, mar uh, the maroon it's just it's beautiful and so I will show you how that looks on death by cross stitch here in just a second because I did start it um also in my one, two, three stitch order, I ordered some opalescent 25 count Lugana uh, because I didn't have any uh, opalescent white uh, even weave. And I was trying to decide whether I wanted to do it on white or on a hand dye. I went ahead and went with a hand dye. So now I have that 25 count Lugana for another project. And I think that's what I'm gonna stitch the Donut Stitch Frozen on. Um, so Death by Cross Stitch, here you are. I've got a thread. On my needle there but this is on midsummer night by under the sea and i have the first it's about i want to say about a thousand stitches it's just under a thousand stitches it's the top border look at that beautiful variegation though my tension is weird on this scroll frame i don't know what's going on with it but look at that beautiful variegation look at this fabric and you can see why I picked this fabric. I was concerned about like Death by Cross Stitch doesn't have as much show through compared to like Life After Death, but the colorway is too perfect. It just, 
I'm up to like what eight times of removing candy but the colorway was just too perfect with the fabric it it matched it's it's the exact right shades so I'm really happy with my choice of doing the of doing the hand dyed fabric rather than the white um, I think it's perfect and I'm actually really enjoying stitching on this I take use this to take a break when I just I'm tired of color changes and whatever else I have going on I stitch on death using it for magical stitches extra credit of working on frames um, so before I go into the rest of my whips, that is my only new start. I mentioned that I finished my other new start and then started Death by Cross Stitch, which leaves me with 13 whips. I have touched one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those 13 this in the last month since my last video. I've touched eight of my 13 whips, um, which is pretty dang impressive. Thank you, School of Magical Stitches. If you want to touch all of your whips, go join School of Magical Stitches. Um, something that people have asked me repeatedly is about my project bags that I make. Yes, they are for sale now. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to make them and they take up space that I don't have a lot of. So um, rather than having an Etsy page where I'm just not gonna have a lot of listings, I'm gonna post them on Instagram. I did run an, a poll on Instagram on where people would rather see them sold. I went on a rant about Etsy and how I don't like it a couple of videos ago. Um, the overwhelming consensus, like 80% of people ask me to sell them on Instagram. What I will probably do is I will probably post them on both. If you want to see my project bags, you need to follow at The Buckeye Boutique. That is my sales page, The Buckeye Boutique. I will link it below, down there. Um, this is one of my bags that I made. I have plenty more of this fabric. I do take custom orders. I would actually 100% be fine doing a custom order because I don't tend to just sit down and sew things, but if you give me a custom order, it gives me an excuse. And I'm more, and I don't know, I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm more likely to do it, but I am more like, I mean, obviously I'm gonna do it rather than just sitting down. So if you guys want a specific size, this is a 15 by 15. It fits an 11 by 11 Q snap with room to spare. Um, Pretty sure it's 15. It's either 15 by 15 or 14 by 14. If you want one this size, say I want one like your Marauders map one, and I would be happy to make it for you. Um, they are aligned. They are. They do have um, a light interfacing in them, so they they don't stand up 100% on their own because they don't have a flat bottom. But they're they're fairly stiff. I mean, that's um, a lot of the ones that I've made for myself. I didn't put interfacing in, so they're real floppy but I can put interfacing, I can leave it out. I have super stiff interfacing if you want one that will stand up on its own, but generally I will make it with this, um, it's a featherweight interfacing. Um, I also can make you matching notions totes with no problem. You know, obviously extra cost, but, and I even have, I don't, I don't put zipper pulls on mine because I'm saving my zipper pulls for ones that I sell, but I do have zipper pull charms that I will put on them, so. So there's my little sales pitch. Oh, grime guards, I make them too. I have lots of grime guards already made. So see if I have anything posted that you like. I have this fabric as a grime guard. You know what else I have as a grime guard? Ravenclaw. I have Ravenclaw, which I'm right wearing my Ravenclaw shirt again. Well, I say again, this is actually a brand new one. This is the first time I've worn this one, but I have Ravenclaw fabric. I have all four houses. I have the house, the stained glass houses. I have one that has like all four of the house crusts on it. Yeah, I have all kinds of Harry Potter fabric because Joanne's had a really good Salem character fabric. I also have Game of Thrones, I have Star Wars, I have Disney, all kinds of stuff. So custom fabric or custom project bag orders. They are now open at the Buckeye Boutique and I'm gonna try to fix my part because it has finally irritated the crap out of me and I can't deal with it anymore. Um, what else? It's gonna do its own thing now, I guess. I don't know. Call me Sammy. Sammy's having crazy hair issues right now. Well, her hair looked really good yesterday on virtual, virtual stitchers. Um, so what's inside the Ravenclaw bag? I'm trying to rush, so I'm getting like kind of kooky now uh, because it is now 622 and I need to finish within the next 10 minutes so that I can get out of here. Uh, Cause I've got to get all the way to Beaver Creek and it's like a 30 minute drive. Okay, so inside of here, I am, uh, this is Mini Cries of the Night. You have seen this before. In fact, this is what it looked like. This is what it's going to look like. 
I am using this for the, I'm not doing it officially because I know my work schedule is going to be too crazy in May and I will miss days. Uh, but I am doing the full coverage fanatics 90 days challenge where I'm trying to stitch on it every single day for 90 days. Put this behind it. There is my current progress. In my last video, I had it turned sideways the entire time I was showing it. I was like, what the hell are you doing, Kat? Anyway, so here it is. I now have two colors finished on the first page. This is the bottom of the first page. This is the side of the first page. So that's, that's page one. So I'm hoping to have page one finished and then some by the end of the 90 days. So um, again, this is a mini. It's only nine pages and only four of them are full pages. So stitch nine challenge goal on this one was one page. I'm kind of giving myself a personal challenge. I would love to finish this by the end of the year, but I have other pieces that are kind of a priority over it. So if I get them finished, then this is going to be my next attempted at finish. Um, next thing on my stitch nine challenge that I have been making a lot of progress on is Beach Romance by Janlin. Here's what it looked like last time. And I have had to move the scroll frame. I've put so many stitches into this. I've put, I used it for a year long challenge that was a thousand stitches. I used it, for, I've used it for two or three um, homeworks that were worth several hundred and I've got, I'm working on another year long on it now. So I've put probably about 2000 stitches in this. I had to move the scroll frame. So everything from this edge here that way is 100% complete. Everything that is scrolled up is 100% complete. And this is not full coverage right here. This is, this frame is that wide, that that top edge there of that beige, that is how wide this frame is. It goes all the way around here. It is empty in the middle. There's a quote. This, um, the beach goes out this way a little bit, but not all the way. And then the water goes across the top. So this is gonna be a finish relatively soon if I just focus on it. So I've been trying to make this my focus piece. Um, I'm tracking what I work on every day in um, April. I tried to do it in March. I lost my spread. I lost my paper that I printed out and never got around to catching back up. But I am tracking it in April. I want to see how many days I can work on this. I still have like five more projects to get through and no time. Okay, next stitch nine, stitch nine, stitch nine challenge. Lady of the flag. You guys remember her? I just, I, had, I showed her for the first time in my last video because it had been six months. Um, so Lady of the Flag is on my Stitch 9 challenge. I want to finish her. I am on track to finish her within a year. Um, I had originally wanted to finish her in six months. That's just not realistic. Not, not with my stitching style and not with how much I have going on. So um, my new goal is to finish her by September 11th of this year. I am more than on track to do that because she, uh, when she turned six months old in March, she was probably about a thousand stitches over halfway. Um, so here she is. Again, everything that is scrolled up is 100% finished. All of her beading is finished. I bead and back stitch as I go. This beading in her dress is completely finished. All of the beading in her flag is finished. All of the beading in her sleeve is finished. And I have started working on the beading in her dress. So I'm in a section now where this is gonna end up with lots of, I'm, I'm down into lots of color blocks. So it's gonna move a lot faster. I haven't worked on her in about, um, probably about two weeks. So she's gonna get some love very soon. The flag, by the way, that is the end of it. That is, the flag is complete now. I just have her dress. And then at the very bottom, it says Liberty and has um, laurel, like, uh, what are those things called? Not laurel, laurel leaves, more, maybe they're laurel leaves that are in metallics. So there's Lady of the Flag for comparison. Here's last time. And here's now. So she's gotten quite a bit done. Oh, my son just left. Bye. Bye, son. Okay. What, what did the bison say when he dropped his kid off at school? Bison. Anyway. <laughs> there was, what, the, what did the buffalo say? Okay, so another project I have made a surprising amount, um, other than the beach romance, something I've made a surprising amount of pro progress on because of School of Magical Stitches. It's amazing what the School of Magical Stitches will do for your whips. I've got a, uh, a threaded needle here. I'm gonna move it out of the way so you can actually see because I stopped like in the middle of a thread. Haunted Mansion, Tiny Modernist. Here's what it looked like last time.
Look at it now. Whoa. <laughs> I got two rooms completely finished. And the roof is almost done. Like, whoa, out of nowhere. So some of the changes I have made, I've only made one that is visible so far. And that is there is Krynik in that mirror. The whole mirror is stitched with Krynik. Um, it's, I used pearl blending filament with the, with the cold four color. Um, so yeah, this was a lot. There was like two weeks in a row that I used this for every single homework assignment because it just so happened to fit. So, so there they are. The little bats hanging out up there in the belfry, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, I, now that I'm actually stitching on something other than the walls and the floor, it's actually a lot of fun to stitch on. It is not a focus piece for me. It is too convenient for too many homework assignments, so I do not work on it unless it is specifically for a homework assignment. Okay. Whoops. Look at my little notions tote with little bats on it. Project bag it's in is Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes, I have more of this fabric. That is the last of my things that's in a project bag. Um, oh, Death by Cross Stitch is living in my... Um, Beauty and the Beast. So, three more projects and then I've gotta go. Okay, so next one is Stitching George Washington. My panel is moving along quite quickly. Here is where it was last time. And here is now. This is page six. I have about 400 stitches left in it. I am planning to finish that tonight. So six pages, 94 to go. Still 20 pages behind because we're now at one year and one month. I should be finishing, I should be, um, yeah, I should be finishing page 22. This is page six. I'm not the only one that's behind, but I'm not as far behind as I was. So that makes me happy. All right, and this one has changed formats since you last saw it. The last time you saw it, it was on an 11 by 17 Q-snap. I got really sick and tired of working on the Q-snap. It would not hold my tension. I couldn't hold it comfortably. It was irritating the crap out of me. So, oh, my neighbor's like walking around in his backyard. That's kind of creepy. Oh, actually that might be a meter reader. I thought our meters were by the street. Anyway, um, so Last time you saw this, this is my Chatelaine Polar Mandala. Last time you saw this, it was on an 11 by 17 Q-snap. I have since moved it to a 36 inch scroll frame. So last time you saw it, it looked like, whoops, looked like this. And here is now. So see where this teal stops up here? That's the top of the page, whoop whoop. So the page is now the full height. My goal on this one, this is a stitch nine challenge. My goal on this one is to finish the center motif. I need to finish Lady of the Flag so that she can be my, this can be my focus piece. I think once I have Lady of the Flag finished and um, Beach Romance finished, this, this honestly is going to be my, this is gonna be my focus piece. I, I said something else was gonna be my focus piece earlier. Maybe, I don't remember. Um, I am trying to stitch on George Washington every single night um, because there's no way to catch up if you keep getting further behind. So each night I pull out Cries of the Night. I put one thread worth in it. I work on George until I have at least 122 stitches, which is my daily goal um, to finish on time. I usually will finish that thread, decide if I want to keep going. If I don't want to keep going, I go to something else. If I do want to keep going, I try to get caught up and I try to get 500 stitches in it. All right, so the last one, this is a fun story and it, I've got to be really quick because it's now 6.31 and I am like, I've got to go. <laughs> um, I, so like as soon as I turn this video off, I'm putting shoes on and running out the door and then it's getting edited tonight. So you will probably be seeing this on Thursday. Um, so uh, back in the 90s, so one of this, uh, one of this month's extra credits is um, turn back time to stitch on something that was designed 1990s or earlier or a reproduction sampler of something that was stitched you know, like a hundred years ago. Well, when my grandmother, my grandma's 89 years old, she stole needle points, um, but she can no longer cross stitch. She can't see the fabric. So she gave me first choice out of everything in her needle point, or sorry, her cross stitch stash. 
I'm sorry if it is, it just, um, and I pulled out some pieces that were actually in progress and there was one in particular that I really, really, really wanted to finish because I'd always loved this piece and she had intended to give it to me when she finished it. And according to her notes, she started it in April of 1999. It was designed in 1995, so it fits this extra credit perfectly and it gave me an excuse to put it into my whip rotation. Um, so she started in 99, she took several breaks from it and it looks like in September of 2000 is the last time that she, she stitched on it. I picked it up and I have now put about 1500 stitches in it. This is Smoky Mountain Cats. I can't remember the designer name. It is a significantly out of print chart, but you can still find it on eBay. There is a diamond painting version of it also, but aren't they so pretty? So I have finished, this cat only had ears. So all of this, his eyes down to here, this cat only had the tips of it. I think, I think he had the top of his head and that was it. He has been done. This cat I've barely put any into. And then this cat here I've done. Um, the biggest problem is that I do not have her original threads for this. So you are going to be able to see a little bit of a color difference, I think. Um, it's not noticeable yet, but I'm afraid it's going to be. Who cares? It's, I mean, it's gonna hang on my wall and I can look at it and say, right, there's where I started on it, I think. So, um, so the color change isn't gonna be that big a difference. The, you know, the dye lots have significantly changed in almost 20 years. So I do notice like up close, I can definitely notice that the modern version of the threads are, a lot of them are slightly more green compared to the, the older colors, which were slightly more gray of a blue, but that's okay. All right, so that's my last whip. That is everything. I'm double checking to make sure because like that, how did I finish and actually finish in like 30 minutes? I don't know, but I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I've gotta get out of here. I've gotta get to Beaver Creek so that I can get my, uh, my awesome massage. And I still gotta put all of these pieces away. I think they're actually gonna stay right here in the chair and I'm just gonna throw a blanket over them. Um, sorry that you only got to see Hunter of the cast today. I don't know where Loki and Oscar have gotten to, but they are, they look like cats now instead of kittens. They're still absolute demons and they tear up my house constantly and I'm constantly having to chase them off and they make tons of noise because that's what kittens do and I love them dearly and Loki loves to lay in my face because he still thinks he's this big. He is this big. He is monstrous. Hello, there's Hunter. If you can hear him in the background, he's very talkative. Come here, Hunter. Hey. He's very talkative. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna sign off now because it, I'm gonna get distracted talking about the cats. It's now 6.35. So I will see you guys. Like I said, I'm gonna try to get another video out before my work schedule gets crazy in May. Um, I will see you guys next time. Bye.